Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and today's video tutorial is going to be on constructors in java so in the previous video tutorial of this playlist of core java we discussed the concept of methods in java and we discussed it in detail that is we understood the theoretical as well as practical part so if you have missed that video you can check it out in this playlist and i'll also drop some links in the description and also in the previous video tutorial we understood the entire theory from our website that is our official website of simple snippets and i also took a poll on our community page of the channel wherein i asked you guys whether it would be good if i go ahead with this website explanation for theory and not the regular presentation kind of scenario so most of you guys have voted that i should be teaching you the theoretical aspect from the website itself because you can directly see the program over here you can also see the theoretical part you can see the diagrams and this would be a very good solution and a one stop solution if you are going to prepare your answers also so i'm going to continue using the website in order to teach you the concepts so whatever videos i have on java or c++ or any other tutorial there would be a corresponding article on our official website and the website url you can see over here it is simple snippets.tech if you haven't checked it out you can check it out and it's not just about tutorials we have technology blogs and lots of information around information technology and computer science as a whole so yeah let's start off with today's topic that is java constructors so what is a constructor now let's first go ahead with the theoretical part and let's understand why we need a constructor and then we'll move on to the practical that is we'll see a program in netbeans id so make sure you watch this video till the end so yeah what is a constructor now basically a constructor is a special method in java so essentially constructor is also a method now we've already seen what a method is in the previous video right it is a group of statements that are clubbed together to perform particular activity or task so constructor is basically a special method and why is it a special method well because it is called when an instance of an object is created and memory is allocated for the object so it is called a constructor because it constructs the value at the time of object creation so whenever we create a new object by using the new keyword at that moment the default constructor is called and that function essentially can be used to allocate certain initial values for the data members you'll understand when we move ahead in this tutorial itself so when is a constructor called as i mentioned each time an object is created using the new keyword at least one constructor is called be it default or parameterized depending upon how you pass the values we'll see the different types in a minute so let me just first zoom in a little bit so that you can see the text clearly so there are certain rules and characteristics for java constructors now if you are coming from a c++ background the constructor concept is pretty much the same so if you've seen those videos which are already there on my channel for c++ object oriented programming we had a constructor video there also so you can pretty much relate to that because almost the concept is pretty similar so yeah constructor name must be same as its class name so there are certain rules as well as certain characteristics of a constructor in java so as as a as the first point says constructor name must be same as its class name an interface cannot have constructor now we haven't talked about interface it's a new concept in java and does not exist in c++ so we'll discuss that in further videos now constructor cannot be private so this is the access specifier and it it always has to be public a constructor cannot be abstract static final native strict fp or synchronized so these are certain things that we'll discuss when we move ahead in the tutorial so constructor cannot be overloaded we have to also talk about overloading so that would be probably the next video in this series constructor cannot return a value not even void an abstract class can have the constructor constructors are automatically called when the object is created so these are certain rules and characteristics regarding the constructor and now there are basically two types of constructor so there is one default constructor and there is parameterized constructor so let's see what those are so a constructor that has no parameters is known as default constructor now just as we pass values as parameter in functions now since constructor is also a function right i'm sorry it's a method i always keep saying it a function so just keep in mind whenever i say it as a function it, i mean a method in java so yeah a constructor as i mentioned is also a special method right so that's why we can also pass values in a constructor as parameters so if there are no parameters then it is a default constructor now do note that if we do not create a constructor explicitly in the program the compiler automatically creates a constructor during compile time okay so you would not find that in your source code because you don't type it but after compilation in the dot class file the compiler will include that code so here you can see an example before compilation you can see we have public my class then we have public static void main the main function inside that we are creating the object right so here we have not created any constructor explicitly but after the compiler compiles this program and and creates the object code 
you can see a compiler has already added the default constructor over here. So this is that default constructor my class. You can see it has it has to have the same name, right? So M Y C L A S S M capital C capital. Even the constructor has the same capitalization because it is case sensitive. Java is a case sensitive language. So the name is same. You can see that there is no return type and there is opening and closing round brackets because essentially it is a method, right? So it will follow that same syntax. And then since we have not specified anything and since compiler has added this default constructor inside the opening and closing curly brackets, that is the body of the constructor, compiler does not add anything. Now you can also create a default constructor if you want to initialize some values. So we'll see that in a program. So essentially I already have a program. You can check it out over here. We'll see that in the NetBeans ID. So I'm just going to move on right now. Let's move on to the parameterized constructor. So a constructor that has parameters is known as parameterized constructor. Pretty straightforward, right? That's that's why the name parameterized constructor. And that's when we actually pass in some values. So here's a program example. You can see again my class. We have created a class. We have int number as a data member or instance variable. Then we have the parameterized constructor over here because in the opening and closing round brackets, we are passing an integer value. And then we are saying system dot out dot print ln parameterized constructor called and then this number that is the instance variable is assigned with the value of x that is x is assigned to this number which is a member variable of the class. So in the main function when I create the object when I say new my class inside the opening and closing round brackets I pass an integer value. So this means that this constructor has to be called. So you can see this is similar syntax right my class opening and closing round brackets and an integer value. So here I have to pass that value. So this will call the parameterized constructor and then four will be assigned to number which is printed over here number values obj dot number and in the output you can see parameterized constructor call because we are printing the statement. So this is how parameterized constructor works. We'll see a program example in just two minutes. Let's see one more thing that is what if you implement only parameterized constructor in a class. So you know what let's let's move on to the programming part and we'll deal this question. You'll see an answer to this question in the programming part. Let's just quickly open up your NetBeans ID. Okay, so I've opened up my NetBeans ID and I've also created a project named myclass.java. So you can quickly go ahead and open up your NetBeans ID and create a project. And I would recommend that you create a project because it will give you the best practice. Don't go to the website and just copy and paste the code. That is not what I would recommend if you are a very beginner. So you type it along with me for the best practice. So yeah, let's start off with the programming part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a default constructor. Okay, so the default constructor needs to have the same name as the class. So I'll say my class opening and closing round brackets, then opening and closing curly brackets for the body. And inside this, I'm just going to print a message saying system.out.println default constructor called. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is in the main function, I'm just going to create an object of my class. So I'm going to say my class obj is equal to new my class opening and closing round brackets. Now in the theory, we just read that when we create a new object and instantiate it using the new keyword, the default constructor is by default call, right? So this means that this method that is our special constructor, that is a default constructor. Let me just comment it over here. Should be called right and this message should be printed. Let's see this if this works. I'm going to run this and there you go. You can see default constructor called which means that our program ran perfectly fine. Now let's say our my class class has a integer variable. I'll say int num. So the primary purpose of a constructor is to initialize the values when we create the object. Now when we create the object and if we do not have any constructor, these variables will get their default values. So integer will be assigned zero character will be assigned a particular character value, which is a default value. We've seen that in the variables and data types video lecture where what are the default values that are assigned if no value is given by us, right? So all those default values are assigned to our variables. But what if we want to give our custom value, which is supposed to be given when the object is created. So that's when we can use our constructors. So in my program, my requirement is that whenever I create an object by default, the num value has to be five. Okay. Let's say this is a bizarre requirement of the program and of the client that initially the num value has to be five. So instead of creating a function separately, you can use this constructor because constructor is used for this same purpose that it is used to initialize the values inside the class that is the ins inside the object whenever you create an object. 
okay so inside my class what i can do is i'll say num is equal to 5 and now if i say system dot out dot print ln num value and if i say obj dot num this value will be printed right let's see so there you go you can see num value printed now if i did not assign this value over here the value i suppose should be zero there you go you can see if we did not assign anything it would have been zero so that's how you can use this constructor now let's say you want to take the input from the user and then assign it so in that case this default constructor won't work right so in that case we can use a parameterized constructor so let me just create one and i'll explain to you in a minute so i'll say my class inside that i'll say int x opening and closing around curly brackets for the body and then i'll paste and say parameterized constructor called and here i'm going to assign num equals to x so the x value that we are going to pass when we create the object is going to be assigned to the instance variable of the class okay so in the main function what i'm going to do is i'm going to say system dot out dot print ln enter a value i'm going to create a scanner variable to take input so scanner is a class so i'm going to create an object of scanner class i'll say new scanner and inside the opening and closing round brackets i'll say system dot in so what exactly i did over here is i created an object of a inbuilt class okay so we've talked about inbuilt class and user defined class right so this is an inbuilt class provided by java and it is used to take input from the input stream which is connected to the console we'll talk in detail about how to take input now that we've understood the classes and objects so in couple of videos we'll see how to take input in java because it's slightly different so right now just understand that we are using this to take input from user so i'm going to say enter a value and then what i'm going to say is int temp is equal to scr dot next int so this function will take input from the console and store it in the temp variable and now in the my class object so here we are creating object right instead of calling the default constructor i'm going to call this parameterized constructor so this is our parameterized constructor right so i'm going to call that and to do that i'm going to pass this temp over here and now let's see which constructor is called let's save this and let's try to run this first it's going to ask us some value i'm going to say 67 and there you go you can see parameterized constructor called and num value is 67 so this is how we took value from the user and we called the parameterized constructor instead of the default constructor okay so now you understood where you can use parameterized constructor you can use it when you want to take input from user and then assign it and you can use the default constructor to assign some default values if user are not providing any values okay now coming to the last point so that was the last query that we left from the website what if you implement only parameterized constructor okay so i'm just going to erase this entire default constructor part in fact i'm just going to comment it out to comment any statements you can just hit control and the forward slash so that will comment each line now the program is going to work fine in this case and the reason is that you can see here we are creating my class and then we are passing the temp variable right so in this case we are directly accessing parameterized constructor but what if we do not want to access the parameterized constructor and we just erase this and we want to access the default constructor but now it is giving us an error but you must be wondering okay i just said that java automatically creates a default constructor whenever we do not provide it right but this is an exception and why is it an exception because when you create a parameterized constructor at that time you have to compulsorily create a default constructor also if you are going to create an object using the default constructor and at that moment java is not going to provide that default constructor so java only provides the default constructor when you don't have any other constructor defined okay you getting the difference so if i just erase this out if i just comment this out you can see the error is gone right but if i just again bring it back you can see the error again exists so that's why you need to understand that whenever you create a parameterized constructor it is always good to have a default constructor as well so let me just uncomment this and then the error goes so this is what the theoretical part over here was trying to explain you can read it out later on and you can try it out yourself in the code and then we have constructor overloading which we will discuss after method overloading which would probably be the next video tutorial in this playlist so yeah this was about the constructors in java and if you are wondering why we do not have a destructor like what we have in c++ we do not have a destructor in java because we have a concept of garbage collection in java which we will talk about 
in some other video because it is a little theoretical concept which essentially eliminates the need for a destructor. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this concept of constructors in Java. You can clearly make an analogy with the constructors in C++ because they are pretty much the same and they are doing the same thing. And in Java we have only two types of constructors. In C++ we had three different types. You can go ahead and check out the article on the website. You can see the code. You already have the code. You can copy and paste it if you want. You can create your own answers by just view viewing this entire article. And then we also have other articles on Java as well as C++. You can see the courses and all. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you like this video. If you have any doubts, you can always put them in the comment section. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends so that even they get help and they get the information. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.